We have a vacation rental that we're rehabbing. If we form an LLC to collect rents, so this is where I get confused. You're rehabbing a property, but now you're collecting rents. In my world, those are two different business activities. Um, and this LLC is owned by a corporation. I would never rent a property that's owned by a corporation. What role would the corporation play? How do the funds actually get from the customer to us personally? So this is where there's a few questions. Um, do you have an answer you want to give on this one first? Because well, I think in this case, we're saying that the LLC that's collecting the rent, more or less the property manager, is owned by the corporation. That might be the case, in which case it should not be owned in that same LLC. Right. You don't want your rentals in your corporation in nope. any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And the reason being is because if you ever take it out, it's considered wages. To, it's, it's actually it's, it's like active ordinary income. Um but in this particular case, there's an LLC owned by the corp. Usually what we're seeing is it's not owned by the corporation, but it's managed by the corporation. And so we'll have an LLC that rehabs and does rentals, and it has a corporation that's collecting the rents, doing all the repairs, doing it, taking care of all the expenses associated with it, and then it nets out just like a property manager would and gives you the the difference. Yeah, and I, I think we're used to hearing the term rehab used for people who are flipping property. Yep. Um, and if you're flipping, fan, more power to you, you would just, the relationship between the LLC and the corp is from a tax standpoint. The LLC flows up into the corp. So you're really just trying to get that flip onto the corporation, which is what we want because, you know, real 10,000 foot view you're either an active business, which is flipping or rehabbing or developing, wholesaling, or you're an investor, which is buy and hold for long-term appreciation, but you're not both. So in a case like this, um, if the LLC is acting as a property manager for the rental property, uh, they may collect the rent. They may pay certain expenses for the property. However, none of that income, none of those rents or expenses belong to the LLC or the corporation. They belong to the rental property. Uh, so what the LLC or the corporation would do is they would collect a management fee uh, for, for mm -hmm. being a property manager. So it'd be like this. I'm going to draw it up. Let me see if I can make it, uh, get my little pen out here. So let's say that you have the rental and you have tenants that pay the rental cash then you have a corporation that's managing and you pay some money over here. The question is, how do you get money? I'm going to make you down here. How do you get money? And the way you get money is in a rental property, you're going to be the tax owner, meaning that I'm going to make that disregarded or a partnership. It's going to flow onto your return. So whether you leave it in here or it comes down here, doesn't matter. It's still going to end up on your 1040. Doesn't matter. If it's paid to the corporation, how does it get it back out to you? It either stays in the corporation, the corporation pays tax on it if it's a C corp. If it's an S corp, then it's going to flow down to you regardless. If it's a C corp or an S corp, it can reimburse your expenses associated with it. And there's lots and lots of ways to get money out. So I'm hoping that that is making sense. But what we know for sure is that rehabs and flips are generally done in a corp. Rents is an LLC owned by you. So if you really want to get down to it. There's going to be another question that's asked that's going to, that we're going to break this down even farther. But we'll get all these things. And we have lots of questions that are being asked, too. Um, I'm going to look at for some of the questions that are relevant to this one. Uh, they may mean if it's a short-term vacation rental. All right. We're going to answer that question when we get to the Airbnb. But if it's short-term, meaning seven days or less, then you are a hotel, as far as the IRS is concerned, and you want that to go into a corp. Um, 
if the renter rental is in an LLC and you want to flow to the corp, isn't that contribution from LLC to corp? No. So if you want the money to go to the corp, you're paying it a management fee. If you don't pay it a management fee, then it flows down to you individually, which is good. It's rents. It's passive. So we like that. So we want to make sure that we do no, uh, do no harm. Uh, one thing we've had uh, issue with in the past is uh, sometimes clients don't understand that they've bought a property and they're rehabbing it for up to a year. It's not available for rent. So your expenses aren't deductible until it is available to rent. Mm -hmm. um, now, we don't lose those expenses. We end up capitalizing them, uh, including in the value of the property. But uh, uh, just keep in mind until you're able, you don't have to actually be renting it, but you have to be advertising it for rent. There was a great case, uh, the Woody case, where there was somebody taking expenses for education involved in, an, in real estate investment, which mm -hmm. is what Jeff is talking about. When you're holding property for appreciation, second you put it up for rent, and you actually make it available is the second you're actually in business. Right. Before that, you're not. And so that's why we tend to use a corporation because the corporation is in business the moment it's managing the LLC. That's what we like to do. All right, let's keep going on. We got lots. 